This is a review of the introduction videos for factoring polynomials. And in those videos, we developed four rules for factoring. It's a good idea to memorize these rules so you can use them when you're given the task of factoring polynomials. Number one on the list, is there a greatest common factor? If there is, you factor it out. From here out, you pay attention to how many terms you're given. Number two, do you have two terms? If you have two terms, you ask another question. Do I have a difference of squares? If you do, then you can factor it. If you don't have two terms, number three, do you have three terms? If you have three terms, there's basically two possibilities at this point. You could have x squared plus or minus a couple other terms. But the important part is you could have a leading coefficient of 1, if nothing's written. And in that case, you can factor directly. Or you could have a leading coefficient other than 1, let's say a 5, and then plus or minus a couple other terms. In this case, leading coefficient other than 1, we've been using factor by grouping. And if you don't have a total of three terms, do you have a total of, for number four, do you have a total of four terms? If you do, you can use factor by grouping. I'll just put fact group. Looking at number one, and using the rules for factoring, do we have a GCF? No. Do we have a total of two terms? No. Do we have a total of three terms? Yes. Is the leading coefficient a one? Yes. So we can factor directly. That is, after we've listed all the factor pairs for 72, If we have a sum of negative 18 out of our factor pairs, let's see, right here we could have a sum of negative 18. So the factored form, give yourself two sets of parentheses. For the a squared, Simply put a and a, and then the correct factor pair goes directly into the answer or the factored form, which is right here. Looking at 2a, do you have a GCF? Yes, so we factor it out. You could factor a 6 out of each term. So whatever you're going to factor out has to sit in front of your bracket or parentheses. And for the first term, we would be left with 5r. And for the second term, 
With what's inside the bracket, you would continue down the list. Do you have two terms? Yes. Is this a difference of squares? No. So this is the factored form of the original polynomial. Looking at 2b and referring to the rules for factoring, do you have a GCF? No. Do you have two terms? Yes. Is this a difference of squares? It's a difference of perfect squares. That means you can factor this polynomial. We can also call it a binomial. And for a difference of squares, there's not much work to show. You simply give yourself two sets of parentheses. The square root of y squared is y. The square root of 49 is 7. You make one positive, one negative, and here's the factored form of the original polynomial. Looking at number three and referring to the rules, is there a GCF? No. You'll work your way down to number four. You have four terms, so we can use factor by grouping to try to factor this. For the grouping part, you group together the first two and factor out the GCF. So we could factor an X out of each term or divide it out. And for the first term, we would be left with X. Here we would be left with a 6. Grouping together the second two terms, we could divide 7 out of each and that is a positive 7 that we are dividing out. So here we'll be left with x and here. Now what we have in parentheses is identical. So that's what we're dividing out. Dividing it out from here, we're left with x. Dividing it out from here, we're left with plus 7. So here's the factored form of the original polynomial. Looking at number 4 and using the rules for factoring, do we have a GCF? Yes. So we factor it out. We can get x to the fourth out of each term as well as the 7. And if you're not sure if 7 can be divided out of 147, since it divided out of the first term and the second term, I suspect it will divide out of here but you can check that real quick. Goes in there twice and obviously it goes in there. So there you have it 21 times. So whatever we're factoring out is going to have to sit in front of our bracket. And for the first term we'll have x squared for the second term, 4x. For the third term, remember that goes in 21 times. And x to fourth cancels. So now with what's inside the brackets, you continue down the list. Do you have two terms? No. Do you have three terms? Yes. Is the leading coefficient a 1? Yes. So you can factor directly. That is, grab the 21, list the factors, and since this is negative, we're looking for a difference 
of negative 4. So if we had negative 7, positive 3, so I say this is factored directly because from here, once you find the correct factor pair, that goes directly to your answer. That is positive 3, negative 7, and you do have to remember to bring this down. So here's the factored form of the original polynomial. Now looking at number 5 and our rules for factoring. Is there a GCF? No. We have three terms. Leading coefficient other than 1. We'll use factor by grouping. So with factor by grouping you have to multiply first times last. List all the factor pairs. Six won't work, seven won't work. We have all the factor pairs. And we're looking for a difference of positive 44. If you had positive 45, a negative 1, that would get what you need. And with factor by grouping, you keep the first term, you keep the last term, and you rewrite the middle term with the two factors that you chose. I'll put 1n, but you only need to put n and that's a positive 45n. Now for the grouping part, you group together the first two. We can factor out an n. And this leaves us with 9n. Group together the second two can factor out a 5. That's a positive 5. This leaves you with 9n. What we have in parentheses is identical, so that's what we're going to factor out. Incidentally, you don't need to show that you're factoring it out. You just need to show the result, which is the quantity 9n minus 1 times the quantity n plus 5. So here's the factored form of the original polynomial. So just briefly, with this first trinomial, leading coefficient of 1, we're able to factor directly. That is, we go directly from the correct factor pair to the answer. With leading coefficient other than 1, we use factor by grouping. That is, we go from the correct factored pair to a four-term polynomial where we group together the first two, group together the last two, etc. So looking at number six, you might not need to refer to the rules for factoring every time. The idea is if you can write these four rules, if you hit a polynomial where you don't know what to do, then you refer to the rules for factoring to help you get started. But here we have three terms, leading coefficient of 1. We will try to factor directly. That is, we'll grab the 56. Seven does work eight times.
Here's all your factor pairs. Because that's negative, we're looking for a difference of positive 15. Is there any way to get a difference of 15? Here we could get a sum but not a difference. So number 6, this polynomial is prime. Now number 7 could look intimidating or strange. So refer to the rules for factoring. Is there a GCF? Yes. So first we'll factor that out. Looking at the coefficients, we can get a 5 out of each term. Looking at b, we can get b to the 4th out of each. And looking at c, we could get c to the 4th out of each. And if we're going to factor it out, doesn't go away, it sits in front of our bracket. So with our first term, the fives will cancel, you'll get b squared, and the c's will cancel. Bring this down. You'll have 4 b c bring this down. You'll have 6. The B's will cancel C to the third. Now it does start out B squared leading coefficient of 1, but you haven't factored anything with C to the third at the end here, so you don't have to worry about trying to factor what remains. Here's the factored form of the original polynomial. Now looking at number 8 and the rules for factoring, do we have a GCF? Um, we could get a 2 out of each term. You can't get a 4 out of that. But you can get 2 out of each term. And I don't put this in the rules for factoring, but if your leading coefficient is negative, you definitely want to factor a negative out of each term because it's confusing to try to factor when your first term is negative. So we'll factor a negative 2 out of each term. This leaves us with a positive negative, um, if that was 40, half of it would be 20, so half of 38 is 19, and here we would get a positive 6. Then you continue down the list with what's inside your bracket. Do you have two terms? You have three terms. Leading coefficient other than 1, we will try factor by grouping. Multiply first times last. List all the factor pairs. Half a 30. Half a 20. 7, 8, and 9 won't work. Here are all the factor pairs. Because the last term is positive, we're looking for a sum of negative 19. Going down our list, if we had a negative 4 and a negative 15, that would work. For factor by grouping, if I have something in front of the bracket here, I'm just going to remember to put that in front of my answer, but I'm not going to keep writing the negative 2 on each step. It's just too confusing to look at. 
So you keep the first term, you keep the last term, and you rewrite the middle as these two. Remember to put in your x. Grouping together the first two, we can factor out 2x. This would leave us with 5x, and here we would be left with a negative 2. Grouping together the second two, we'll be able to factor a 3, and if this is negative, you're factoring a negative term, so in this case a negative 3 out of each. Here we'll be left with a positive 5x, and here we'll have a negative 2. What we have in parentheses is identical, so that's what we will factor out. When we factor it out of here, we're left with 2x. When we factor it out of here, we're left with negative 3. And you have to remember to bring this negative 2 down and put it in front of your answer. So here's the factored form of the original polynomial. Looking at 9, no GCF, leading coefficient of 1. Might look a little strange with the xy and the y squared, but I've talked about how to handle that. It's basically the same way you handle the x squared and the x. We'll try to factor directly, grab the 20, and list all the factors. Since the last term's negative, we're looking for a difference of positive 8. If you had a positive 10, negative 2, that will work. So you give yourself two sets of parentheses. For the x squared, you'll just need x and x. For the y squared, you'll need y and y. Since you're factoring directly, you just plug in your negative 2, your positive 10. Here's the factored form of the original polynomial. If it's not clear to you why this works, you should check the answer. And you can always check a factoring answer by multiplying. Looking at 10, this may look strange, but you refer to your rules for factoring. Is there a GCF? Not for all four terms. Two terms, three terms, you have four terms. So just try to use factor by grouping to see if you can factor this. Grouping together the first two, we could get a 6m out of each term. This would leave us with 3m, and this would leave us with plus 2. Grouping together the next two, we can factor out n, and if this is negative, we factor out a negative n from each term. So here we would have a positive 3m, and here we would have a positive 2. Now what we have in parentheses is identical. That's what we will factor out. Factoring it out of here, we're left with 6m. And factoring out of here, we're left with negative n. So here's the factored form of the original polynomial.
Looking at 11A, is there a GCF? No. Do you have two terms? Yes. Is this a difference of squares? It's a difference of perfect squares. So we can factor this. Give yourself two sets of parentheses. The square root of 9a squared is 3a. The square root of 64 is 8. You make one positive, one negative. Here's the factored form of the original polynomial. Looking at 11b, there's no GCF. You have two terms. Is it a difference of perfect squares? Yes. So you can factor this. Two sets of parentheses. The square root of x squared. The square root of 25y squared. You make one positive, one negative. Here's the factored form of the original polynomial. Looking at 11c, is there a GCF? No. Do you have two terms? Yes. Is this a difference of perfect squares? It is a sum of perfect squares. There's no way to factor this. It is prime. Looking at 11d, is there a GCF? Yes. So we factor the GCF out of each term. Factoring it out of the first term, you're left with x. Factoring out of here, you're left with a 9. You proceed down the list. Do you have inside your bracket two terms? Yes. Is this a difference of squares? No. This is a perfect square, but it's a sum, and the first term is not a square. So this is the factored form of the original polynomial. If you would like some practice with these concepts, as long as you're at my website, I have two worksheets, each with a detailed answer key.